So this is the first lecture on linear programming. Um, and I'm just going to do kind of an, an intro example today. Uh, and um, so first of all, let's talk about what linear programming actually is. Um, okay, so it's a way to allocate resources, um, especially good if you have any limited resources. Um, and so it helps you maximize your profitability, minimize your costs. Um, okay. And what it involves is the following. You need or have an objective function. And this is what you want to maximize or max minimize. Um, so let's say it's your profit. Um, you want to um, maximize your profit. Or let's say it's your costs, your transportation costs of certain goods. Uh, you want to minimize those costs. Um, okay. Some good examples of linear programming problems when we have, um, let's say, a force that's being cut down and it's going to be uh, turned into um, logs. And those logs then will get shipped um, to different mills for processing. Okay. And it could go to mill A, B, or C. And then from there, the products generated from those wills, mills, the lumber, the pulp, the everything can then get shipped to different places for processing also. Um, now what you want to do is you want to have a kind of a nice balance here of where you send the logs to be processed depending on how busy each mill is, how far away each mill is, etc, etc, how much of each product it needs right now or has, or uh, and then how much each of the plants that process its products um, need. And so all of this can be handled with linear programming. Actually, in forestry, there's a lot of linear programming used um, to optimize transportation, um, resources, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of other places it's well used as well. Um, so let's say we're trying to minimize the total cost for transportation of all our items. Um, that would be our objective function. Now, decision variables. These are our variables that we're going to be working with what we think is variable kind of within the pro the problem. Um, so we could say this is what changes. So it takes a little bit to think about, okay, what is changing? Um, okay. And then our constraints. For example, let's say mill A can only take another 300 logs. They're almost at capacity today. Uh, mill B can only take so much. The trucks can only haul so much, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, or you only have so much budget, or you only have so many labor hours. Um, so the constraints, um, these are constraints on the variables, and these will be um, example that your production has a limit each day. You can only produce so much of each product. Um, your labor hours, you can only have so many eight labor hours in a day. All three of these pieces then, the objective function, the decision variables, and the constraints, all together make up what we call an optimization problem. And we're going to use the linear programming method on them. Okay. Now, um, a key word here within this method is the word linear. Linear means straight line. Um, so linear means that the objective function and the constraints are linear functions, or straight lines. And if you remember, a straight line has the following. Let's say y equals a plus bx is an example of a straight line. Notice the power of x is just 1. That is a straight line equation with a constant, a slope, and x to the power of 1, or whatever your variable is. And notice y is also really to the power of 1. So both of the variables uh, have to be just to the power of 1, no other power. Uh, to be a linear equation, um, okay. the only slight exception is if you just had that as your straight line. Um, that's just a flat line where y is just equal to a, where a is a constant. 
Okay. For now, though, don't worry about any of that. Um, okay, I won't be testing you on whether we have a linear problem or a nonlinear problem. It's just nice to know why um, it's called linear programming and when we can use it. We can only use it on straight line, objective, and constraint functions. Okay, now programming refers to the fact that it's a step-by-step -step series of instructions to find the optimal solution. It's essentially a program, whether you do it in Excel or on the computer or by hand, you're basically following a series of steps. They're called a program. Uh, and there's lots and lots of applications. Scheduling is a really big one. Trying to schedule people, uh, the rooms in a building, trying to optimize them, pattern, lay it, pattern layouts to reduce waste. Um, yeah, so many things. Loading ships, uh, airline maximum seating, just so many uses for linear programming. Um, and note that there are um, some types of problems that you can actually solve by graphing them out. Uh, you can solve problems with two variables uh, by graphing them out. Um, so um, that's where you have, like, let's say an X and a Y, and you actually graph the function itself, and you graph all the constraints, and you can actually see where the optimal solution is on the graph itself. Um, okay, now, moving on. Um, okay, so here is kind of the problem or the program we follow. Here are the steps that we use when we do linear programming. Um, so first, we try to state the problem algebraically. So we're going to write down the equations for the problem. What are they? What is the objective function? What are the constraints in terms of equations? And um, are there any what are called non-negativity constraints? So can any of the variables, let's say, not be negative? For example, this right here means that x cannot be negative. It can only be 0 or higher. Okay. Uh, and then for two decision variables only, we can graph everything and see where the optimal solution is based off of the graph. Um, so yeah, we look at what's called the area of feasibility. What we do is we actually uh, take all of our constraints uh, and we highlight the area that they uh, allow us to be within. And then we look for our optimal point within that area. Okay. Uh, and what we do with the objective function to find the optimal points is we do what are called level curves or isoprofit lines, if we're talking about profit, uh, where you have the function having a certain constant value for each line. So for these level curves, uh, each line represents constant value for the curve and for the um, let's say the um, objective function okay um, okay and then we can figure out where, which level curve fits on the extreme parts of our, um, our uh, area that we're, our area of feasibility, and then we go from there. Um, I'll show you more of that when we actually get into the example here. 